Hi everyone, Don Smith, and today I would like to share with you a technique that probably many of you have heard about, uh, probably a lot of you have tried, um, and I actually referenced the photographer who came up with this technique in my last video, and I blanked on his first name and I want to apologize. This is called the Orton Technique or Orton, I've heard it pronounced both ways, and the photographer's first name is Michael. Um, I'm just gonna call, it, call him Orton. I've never met him personally. I'm familiar with his work, and you can check him out at michaelorton.com. And what he came up with about 20 years ago, and it was published in a popular photo magazine at the time, was a technique where he would actually give a dreamlike effect to his images. And he would capture one image, overexpose it by about a stop, anywhere from a stop to a stop and a half, sometimes two stops, I've heard him say. And then he would capture another frame uh, at the correct exposure. And then he would sandwich these two slides together. Now you gotta remember back uh, if you were shooting slide film or chrome film as we called it and I shot that for over 20 years to sh to keep these in register is very difficult number one and number two when you throw uh, a picture out of focus it's actually going to move the focus a little bit so with the zoom lens you would have to either zoom in or zoom out to get the two aligned properly so it wasn't an easy technique that he developed but he came up with these really cool looking dreamy like uh, images that have inspired thousands of photographers and even software manufacturers nowadays. And it's come down through the years and it's just simply known as the Orton effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you two ways of doing it. And one is in Photoshop. This is the way I learned years ago how to do the Orton effect. And then I'm gonna show you a new way in Luminar, I referenced it in my last video, where they actually have a plug-in video, or excuse me, a plug-in filter called the Orton filter that makes it really, really simple. So um, let's first talk before I, I show you the two techniques. Let's first talk about the type of lighting that's required for this technique. And typically you wanna find a scene such as these dogwoods in Yosemite National Park. You want to find them on either a, a cloudy day as we had on this day. In fact, I think we had a little light rain just starting to fall. Zero wind, which made this very easy to photograph, which I did with a, uh, a zoom lens. And if you don't have a cloudy day, then just simply wait until you get to the edges of the day when you have indirect light. In other words, contrast, it can work for the Orton technique, but I, you know, you're re it's kind of hit and miss. But the softer the light, the more indirect the light, the softer the shadows, the easier this technique becomes. So this is really, you know, it's a pretty picture of a bunch of fresh dogwood blooms, but I just wanted to see if I could do something a little bit different with it. So I'm gonna show you, first of all, the Photoshop way, and then I'll take you in and show you the, the Luminar way. So I have my image open, and what I wanna do is I want to come over to image and duplicate it. Never work on the original image for any of these techniques. It's just easier to work on a, uh, on a duplicate, and that way you're not touching the original. Uh, so I've made a copy, and now I'm gonna go back up under image, and I'm gonna come down to apply image. And I've already been messing around in here, but you wanna come down here to where it says blending. First of all, make sure your channel says RGB. Come down in here to the blending. You'll have a bunch of different um, types of blend modes you can go into. But you wanna select screen because screen's gonna give you that overexposed look and it's gonna basically overexpose it by about a stop. So I'm gonna click OK. Now, we're gonna come back up under image and we are going to duplicate this image. Now we're going to go ahead and do our out of focus image. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to come up here to filter. I'm going to come down to blur and I'm going to come down to Gaussian blur. 
And you can see that I select an amount of 50. When I first tried this, you can really go in a range of about, oh, 20, a radius of 20 pixels up to 50. But um, I leave it at 50 because I'm gonna show you a little bit further down the line as to why when we get into our layers palette, we have an opacity slider. So I can always back it off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on to the 50. So now I have two images. I have my overexposed sharp image and my overexposed blurred image. So I'm gonna copy this image, Command or Control A, Command or Control C, and then just come back over to my sharp overexposed image and hit Command or Control V to paste. Okay, now let's look over here to the right-hand side under my Layers palette. And you can see that I have my out of focus image stacked on top of my sharp image, but we're still overexposed. So here's where the power of um, the blend modes comes in. And if you look right up here by default, it's at normal. And you can try a lot of different blend modes. A lot of times when I'm doing the Orton effect, I'll come to multiply. And that looks, you know, that looks okay, but you can, you can play around. Um, Let's see, another one I like looking at is soft light. No, in this instance, that doesn't work too well. Um, the other one I'm gonna take a look at, oh, let's go to uh, this time, darker color. And now I'm starting to get, that looks pretty cool. That's the effect I'm looking for. So you can just really kind of play around um, with these blend modes until you come up with something that looks interesting. Now, here's the part I was telling you about a little bit earlier, the opacity slider. And this is why I left my Gaussian blur at 50 pixels. I can take this all the way off or I can bump it in to taste, you know? So it's, it's up to you, it's your call. This is your image. It's, it's however you want the effect to look. I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at the full 50 because I really like, I wanna make this a soft, dreamy effect. And now I'm gonna flatten this layer. So just go ahead and click Command or Control E, and that will flatten your layer. And now I wanna open this image back up into Adobe Camera Raw. And uh, two ways to do that. You can come up here under Filter, and um, you can go to, okay, Camera Raw, there it is. And that's the easiest way. Or you can see the shortcut, which is Shift Command A, but we'll just be in that, we're in that filter dropdown. We'll just, we'll do that. So what I wanna do is with any other image, I'm gonna first of all go ahead and check my white and black points. So hold the Option or Alt key and just slide until you just see that, see that first little pop of uh, white or color and then just back it off till it goes away. I'm gonna check my blacks. This will give me the proper contrast. And um, instead of going ahead and bringing the midtones down, I'm gonna come over here to the tone curve. Uh, I've showed you this in other videos. I'm really a fan. This is how I learned how to do contrast control was through the tone curve. And I just wanna be in the um, point curve, not the parametric where I have my sliders. This time I wanna be in the point. Come right up here to the middle and just pull down just a tad and that's going to give you that little bit of saturation we're looking for, a little bit of darkness. And now those dogwood blooms are really starting to pop out of there. I'm going to come back up here to the basic panel. And let's try a little bit of clarity. I don't want to go too much because I don't want to lose that soft feel. I want to keep that misty feel going. And I'm going to add a little bit of saturation to get those yellows to really pop out of there. Okay, and now I'm gonna click all right or okay. And there you have it. That's one way of doing the Orton effect. That's the kind of classic way in Photoshop again that I was taught. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Now, um, software continually evolves and there's a very cool product out from McFun. It's on my last video and I'll, let's come down here. It's called Luminar. And we'll give this a chance to open Luminar, as of right now, only works on Mac, but as I understand, they are working on a PC version. So we are now in Luminar, and we have a bunch of filters opened up over here on the right, and you can see that I have a layer over here. I'm gonna right-click, and I just wanna delete all these filters. 
So I'm back to my original well-exposed sharp frame of the dogwood um, blooms. So this time I'm going to come up here to where it says add filter and I get this little drop down window that opens up and I'm going to scroll down to Orton effect right there. Okay, and when I click, you can see the Orton effect filter opens up. Now, by default, nothing happens because the amount of what I want to add in there has uh, is set to zero. So I'm just going to tug on the amount and you can see we're starting to get the soft, dreamy effect. And I can change my softness. Okay. And um, I can actually take the brightness and lighten it up, but I don't want to in this case because it's already pretty bright. Uh, I will take my saturation and move that up some. You can play around with contrast, get those shadows to go really dark, but I'm lose. I, I don't want to lose the dreamlike effect. So too much contrast gives the illusion of, sharp, of sharpness, which is what I don't want. And maybe really pop this up quite a bit. Okay, so we're going to hit apply. See how easy that was? It's, it's eliminating all those steps that I had to do back in Photoshop. And there's my other version of the Orton effect. So two different ways. If you do have Photoshop, you can go through that way. I think you have a little bit more control with Photoshop simply because you have that opacity layer. But as you can see, this is really close to what we did in Photoshop. And this gives its own beautiful look in Luminar. And you can do this in mere seconds. So that's the Orton effect. Michael Orton, we need to thank him. Um, Michael's still creating pictures as far as I know. And happy birthday, Marta. <laughs> and uh, again, check out his site, uh, www.michaelortonphotography.com. Uh, we want to give uh, all credit to him because he's really the guy that came up with this technique. And if he, he, if he wasn't the guy, he's at least the guy that's been credited with coming up with this technique. And it's, it's a kind of a fool, uh, cool way to go back and reimagine some of your images and take a look at them. So I hope this has helped you out. Until next time, this is Don Smith. If you feel you want help with your processing or shooting, what have you, you can go to my website, which is www.donsmithphotography.com. Click on the workshop link. And I offer a lot of group workshops and private workshops. You can get in touch with me. Send me an email, don at donsmithphotography.com. I'd be happy to get back to you and uh, help you with your photography. So get out there, create some images, have fun with all of this, and we'll talk to you next time.